Athens, Georgia, good day to you all. As always, it's great to be with you. I'll tell you that never does a day pass when I don't thank my lucky stars for this chance to work among you. The work we do as your local government is not done alone. We work through engagement with each of you, partnerships with community institutions, and we draw upon the data, observations, and creativity that our committed county commissioners, staff, and management all bring to the party. We will currently update our work, including our strategic plan, whose priority areas will inform my discussion today, and the strategic plan also serves as a guide in crafting our annual budget. Our first priority area extends from the theme, Good Neighbors. It includes a multi-year expansion of our emergency medical services work through the fire department. This year, we will be adding an EMS supervisor to each shift with the goal of bringing rapid response, high quality medical care to the entire community served by our nine excellent fire stations. We also continue to emphasize a range of efforts at crime reduction. While any one episode of violence in the community is one too many, and there were a couple of specific areas of rises in crime in 2021 and 22, we've maintained a strong handle on community safety while similarly situated peer communities across Georgia saw dramatic spikes in murders in the last three years, we have not had more than half a dozen murders a year in 2020, 2021, or 2022. Overall, a resident of Athens is less than half as likely to experience a crime today than was true in 1995. This is to the great credit of our well-trained, committed police department and to so many others working to keep our community safe. Our good neighbors work also includes those with whom we would extend our reach into the community. The Neighborhood Leaders Program via a partnership with Family Connection Communities and Schools of Athens, as well as through our own inclusion office, where we welcomed Dr. Remy Epps as new inclusion officer this year. A closely related goal area is that where we seek to close gaps that exist among residents in Athens. We recognize that many of these gaps have existed since this became a place called Athens, but we have a strong motivation to do everything we can to narrow them. This includes enhanced youth development services. We allocated $7 million of our Federal American Rescue Plan Act funds to this area, with down payments in the form of new summer programming in 2022 in 2023, and the coming reopening of community spaces in Athens Housing Authority facilities. We are currently exploring a partnership with the Clark County School District, focused not just on youth support generally, but on violence prevention, as we wish to ensure that our young people can live without the trauma that precipitates gang involvement and a lifetime of challenge. Extending this effort into workforce development is a step being pursued simultaneously, this work in conjunction with the Athens Area Chamber of Commerce and our business community. We recognize that if young people can successfully begin their careers, they will be stronger assets to the community, to their families, and to themselves. I could not talk about closing gaps without highlighting the enormous economic development wins announced in recent months, which will be bringing new high-wage jobs to Athens including biotech outfits like Meisner, with 1,700 jobs at very competitive wages, salaries averaging $82,000 a year. The biotech sector also saw the arrival this year of Dalen, an operation who will make honeybee vaccines, so important to cultivation of the plants we rely upon for nutrition. These new entities join an ecosystem of biotech firms, including Athens Research and Technology, Boehringer Ingelheim, and many more. Our creative economy also saw a boost this year with the opening of the Athena Film Studio and has been further supported by a newly created position in our Economic Development Department to support small, creative, women-owned, and minority-owned businesses. We also strive to be a local government focused on strong organizational improvement, which is our next area of discussion. This includes high quality pay and benefits as one of Athens' largest employers. We've arranged funding for an organization-wide pay study in 2024 and plan to consistently return to analysis of our pay scale as we want to remain competitive amidst this very tight labor market. 
We are also increasing use of public engagement tools as the fractured media landscape that we experience in this era demands that we expand the means by which we seek your input and convey information to you. Our public information office has expanded from four to six employees in just the last two years to better reach all of our residents. One of the most critical areas of our strategic plan right now is our push for housing for all. We recognize we are in a uniquely challenging time in regard to housing availability and cost. The slowdown in new housing construction across the nation in the wake of the 2008 era Great Recession was not joined by decisions of families to stop having children or businesses to stop expanding their operations. Thus, the population boom has caught us in a supply and demand crunch that was captured in a report prepared by the National Housing Advocacy Group Up for Growth last year. They found that while the Athens market is certainly not the most stressed in the nation, it is the single market in the United States that saw the greatest increase in stress through the decade of the 20 teens. Knowing the challenge this puts on community members, particularly residents at the low end of the income spectrum, we're going to use every tool in the box. Our inclusionary zoning code, which provides density bonus incentives for construction of workforce housing, has gained traction as new projects become permitted. Also, our tax allocation district program, which allows newly generated tax dollars to support community goals such as housing in redevelopment projects, is also up and running. We don't like to start with any small opportunities when we kick something off, so we began use of our TAD program with what could be Athens' largest development project ever, the redevelopment of the Georgia Square Mall, likely to clock in at more than half a billion dollars of new investment here in Athens. Construction of the North Downtown Redevelopment Area, where the former Bethel Homes stood, also continues in earnest, with new residences rising out of the ground this year, made possible with funding through your splossed pennies, along with federal low-income housing tax credits and private investment. While the new structures will be attractive, what is most exciting is that young people growing up in this neighborhood will be in a well-resourced environment, which has been demonstrated through the academic research of Harvard economist Raj Chetty and others to produce healthier, lifelong outcomes than living in isolated zones of poverty and desperation. Other efforts in the housing arena include use of our Federal American Rescue Plan Act dollars for both new construction and repair and renovation of existing homes. I also anticipate use of public properties owned by the athens Clark County government as a means of providing more affordable homes, such as the property currently used for bus maintenance at the corner of Boulevard and Pound Street, as that operation will be moving to Olympic Drive. Another significant activity we have also begun is a review of our land use plan, which will continue for about the next year and a half and provide an opportunity to increase density in some places and extend infrastructure in others. Other opportunities will be highlighted in a report by the outside group SRNA, which will be finalized this summer and will provide us new ways to expand our toolbox of housing options. All of this must be joined by continued advocacy to state and federal officials, as the housing challenges experienced locally are common to so many communities, particularly those across the Sun Belt and those with the vitality of ours. Of course, the most challenging end of the housing crisis is the presence of the homeless population in Athens. Some of these individuals are visible, with people lined up for shelter or food at Bigger Vision or Sparrow's Nest, but many are invisible, families and children living in cars or doubled up on the floor of others' homes. Concurrent with our housing consulting work, the Cloudburst Group is now preparing recommendations for immediate and long-term steps, which will likely include transitioning from the current structured encampment on Barber Street to a more sustainable set of opportunities. I want to turn now to a number of public infrastructure projects that are moving forward as we speak. Not the least of these is the construction underway at the Classic Center Arena. As a music fan and parent to a baseball fanatic, every time I visit another community, I'm reminded of how fortunate we are to have a high quality performance and convention center in the heart of downtown Athens. With hotels, 
restaurants, and entertainment all just footsteps away. The arena will be the center of a new district extending along the North Oconee River, bringing new energy to the bones of the former rail yard and manufacturing center that sat there a century ago. We are also continuing judicial facility planning with the intent to construct a new courthouse and backfill the existing courthouse with the array of county offices now spread among several buildings so that you will be able to get a building permit, explore property records, and get your business occupation license all under one roof. Cost escalation over the last three years has made this a challenging project, but I have every confidence that we will find a way to create a home for a world-class service delivery center that will serve you for decades into the future. Location selection for the Eastside Library, along with a new youth development facility on the east side, are also now underway. And I'm very excited that we'll have new opportunities proximate to students at Cedar Shoals High School, Hillsman Middle School, Gaines Elementary, and for thousands of east side residents. Park improvements are underway right now at Bishop Park and Memorial Park, and new investment at Holland Park in Beach Haven will soon follow. All of these facilities I mentioned will be integrated into our 100% clean and renewable energy plan, including a very large solar array at the Classic Center. This sustainability work will extend beyond our own facilities and include a community energy program to ensure that older homes have ideal weatherization. Our goal is that all of our facilities are supported with clean energy by 2035 and that the entire community is similarly situated by 2050. The final area in our strategic plan that I'll address is safely moving around Athens. This year, we launched a Vision Zero office within our Transportation and Public Works Department. This office is focused on our belief that the only acceptable number of roadway deaths and severe accidents is none. We are obviously not there, but we will continue to evaluate roadways, intersections, and bike and pedestrian projects to create the safest community possible. Our work in this area includes many partnerships with our friends at the Georgia Department of Transportation, the reconstruction of the interchange at Lexington Highway and the Highway 10 Loop will be wrapping in the next year and provide a much smoother passage to the east side. The upgrade at Atlanta Highway in the Loop will start this year replacing the aging bridge over the Loop so that residents on either side can move more easily east and west. We are also in the planning stages of the roundabout at West Broad Street and Hancock Avenue, along with roundabouts along Chase Street near the Loop. Our transit plan update is also now underway and will include hubs on both the east and west sides of town to extend service to more residents. At the same time, there's regional planning for a bus connection from downtown Athens along Highway 316 to the Shambly Marta Station, which would allow students, commuters, and travelers easy access to their homes, businesses, entertainment, and the Hartsfield-Jackson Airport. Expansion of bike and pedestrian facilities also continues. Upcoming sidewalks and paths include ones along Lexington Road and Mitchell Bridge Road, along with many other locations. I encourage all of you to enjoy the new North Oconee River Greenway segment adjacent to the Oconee Hills Cemetery. In the next three years, the Oconee Street Bridge over the river will be replaced, allowing direct access between the Greenway trails south of Highway 78 into Dudley Park and to destinations northward and eastward, including the gorgeous new Firefly Trail Bridge over Trail Creek that just opened recently. This is part of a series of physical connections throughout Athens that mirrors the social and economic connections that we are also striving to make just as a ribbon of concrete from downtown Athens to Winterville provides recreation and access to nature, it also provides a space for us to connect with each other. These individual connections are such an important asset in the life of this community. So once again, I thank each of you for your ongoing contributions. Be well, and please continue to let us know how we can support the Athens community in even stronger fashion.